Is your tap water safe to drink? If you're like millions of Americans and people around the world living near contaminated water sources, the answer is probably no. You'd be hard pressed to even find one source of uncontaminated water in our country. There's no joke on that. So it may seem startling, but with the advancement of water technologies, you'd think that people would be able to have access to clean water, but the opposite is true. Even with all of our filtration systems, municipal water systems, and you know all of the regulations that are on tap water, contaminants, pesticide, runoff, and heavy metals are still making their way into our drinking and our shower water. It's totally unacceptable. In this video, you're gonna learn about the top five heavy metals that are lurking in your water. You're gonna learn about why there are more metals in your water today than ever before. And you're gonna learn about how nearly everyone in the United States could be at risk for heavy metal poisoning. We'll also talk about a few tips and tools to help protect yourself and your water from heavy metals and other contaminants. So let's talk about which heavy metals are in your tap water. So number one is lead. Lead is one of the most common contaminants because it's found in the pipes that are leading to your home, that are bringing the water to your home. The most problematic are galvanized water pipes. If you live in an old home, you may have one of these old metal main drain pipes or galvanized lead pipes that are coming into your home. These contain lead and that lead can then leach into your water. Lead can be found in pipes, fixtures, and faucets. And if you live in a home built before 1986 and even earlier, then your home is more likely to be contaminated with lead, lead in the paint, lead in the pipes. And so just be aware of that. The Safe Drinking Water Act from the EPA makes sure that municipal water sources monitor the levels of lead in your water and keep that at a safe level where no adverse health effects can occur. However, there are lots of municipal sources, uh, lots of municipal water sources that may not be doing the job they're supposed to be doing, and you have disasters like Flint, Michigan. I'm telling you, there's other cities around the country that are Flint, Michigan's in the making. Cities like Los Angeles, for instance, switch from chlorinating the water to using an ingredient called chloramine to disinfect the water. This will more easily leach lead from pipes, these older galvanized pipes, and lead to more lead in the water supplies, the water that people are drinking and showering in. And the reason it's being used is because chloramine is cheaper than chlorine. And the problem with lead is it bioaccumulates in your system and your body has a really hard time excreting it. So lead tends to bioaccumulate in our bones. That's where the body likes to store it. And this is really problematic mostly for children because you know their bodies and brains are growing and they're more susceptible to the very toxic effects of lead. And so lead is shown to lower IQ. It's shown to cause chronic fatigue. It can cause bone growth issues. So it can cause shorter stature. It causes impaired hearing and also impaired function of blood cells. So that's one of the reasons it can lead to chronic fatigue. So number two is arsenic. and number two, industrial or agricultural pollution because arsenic is also used in pesticides and farming. So while the first can be hard to control, you can't control arsenic naturally occurring in the environment, the pollution is where the real issue comes from. In fact, some industries in the US release thousands of pounds of arsenic in agricultural applications and industrial applications, and that persists in our environment and then it eventually finds its way into the groundwater. So arsenic is classified as a class one carcinogen. It can contribute to resistant weight loss because arsenic will poison enzymes that transports fat out of fat cells. So if you're having trouble losing weight, arsenic could be one of the reasons why. Arsenic also impairs your body's ability to produce energy. It poisons enzymes that transports nutrients into your mitochondria, so it interferes in your energy metabolism. It's also implicated in diabetes, blood sugar control, 
heart disease and skin lesions, hair loss as well. Uh, but there's lots and lots of other symptoms, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Number three is cadmium. So cadmium can enter the groundwater and in the water supply of your home in the same way that lead does. So it can enter through galvanized pipes and through other fixtures, pipe fittings, water coolers, water heaters, and taps. Research from the EWG or the Environmental Working Group has found cadmium in 39 states in people's drinking water affecting 8 million people. And there are several organ systems affected by cadmium, including the skeletal system, the urinary system, the reproductive, the cardiovascular, the central and peripheral nervous system, and the respiratory system. Cadmium gets into our environment also, again, from industrial processes. It's also the result of coal burning. Cadmium is naturally occurring in petroleum deposits and coal as well. So the burning of these fuels releases cadmium and other heavy metals into our environment. It then kind of uh, gets into the ocean, into our water supplies, and then makes its way into our bodies in the air, food, and water. And epidemiological evidence suggests that cadmium can contribute to cancers, to autoimmune diseases, to immunity issues, including cancers of the breast, lung, prostate, and kidneys. And so how cadmium works is it basically when two cells are copying, copying that DNA, cadmium interferes in that, that DNA copying properly, and then you can get this mutant cell, which can then be a cancerous cell, be it benign or malignant. So that's how cadmium, especially from smoking, when people smoke, they get cadmium. When people smoke marijuana, they also are getting cadmium because tobacco and marijuana plants are very, very adept at pulling cadmium out from the soil. And so that's really the main mechanism whereby cigarettes uh, cause cancer. It's from the cadmium. So number four is mercury. With industrial practices like coal burning and industrial pollution, there's more mercury in our environment than ever before, and mercury is the most toxic heavy metal on the planet. So mercury makes its way into our water supply from industrial pollution, but you know there's also the coal burning that goes on. A lot of power plants are burning coal. A lot of different industries will burn coal for energy, and that sends mercury up into the air, and then it settles into our soil, into our lakes and rivers, into the ocean where it bioaccumulates in the water and in the food supply as well, namely fish and shellfish. Research shows that mercury can be detected in every body of water in the United States, but it's especially concentrated in the eastern United States, specifically the southeastern coastal plain. Mercury is also very neurophilic. It loves to build up in brain tissue and the nervous system. It is stored in fat cells so it can cause developmental issues in children. It causes nervous system toxicity, so people will get tremors, memory loss, neuromuscular issues, headaches. Mercury toxicity can even mimic symptoms of MS or, or multiple sclerosis. A lot of misdiagnoses happening when they really have mercury toxicity. We also have kidney failure, immune toxicity, digestive issues, and lung disease. Number five is uranium. So ever since we started using chemical fertilizers, this chemical fertilizer will etch uranium that's naturally occurring in water and soil, and then it will drain into our water supply. The most common sources of uranium exposure are through well water that's been contaminated, along with manufacturing and nuclear energy pollutants. A recent study conducted by U.S. researchers found that almost 2 million people in California and the Southwest United States and the Midwest live on aquifer sites that have up to 180 times the safe level of uranium. And I can back this up because many of the clients that I test in California and sometimes in Arizona and Utah have very high levels of uranium on their hair mineral analyses. Furthermore, when scientists at the University of Nebraska took 275,000 water samples, they discovered that the majority of Americans live less than a kilometer from uranium polluted wells. Once uranium enters your body, the kidneys are the main target, but can also deposit in your brain, your lungs, your reproductive organs, and your lymph. Is your water toxic? You know, cities and municipal water sources are required to do testing for a handful of chemicals and a handful of metals, 
but they're not testing for hundreds of medications. The number one contaminant is testosterone. People are taking uh, all kinds of hormones and medications they are urinating in their water, and that sewage is then recycled into drinking water. It's purified, but they're not required to test for medications or hormones, birth control pills, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications. There's also a whole range of heavy metals and chemicals that they are also not required to test for. So I assure you, your tap water is not safe to drink. By the way, before we move on, if you feel like you're tired a lot and you're wondering why energy drinks just aren't working anymore, I created a really good video called Toxic Metals and Fatigue. Just click this link right here above me and you can watch that video. And that will explain to you the mechanisms by which heavy metals interfere in energy metabolism and what you can do about it. So check that out. I always recommend using water filtration at home, especially for drinking water. But unfortunately, a lot of the mass market, you know, water filters that you get at large stores, these chain stores are not adequate enough to get a lot of the medications or to get heavy metals out of the water. They just don't do the job. Some of these filters might bind to chlorine and they have, they do get some contaminants, but they mainly make the water taste a little bit better by removing some of the minerals and the hardness out of the water, but they're just not doing enough to protect your health. When it comes to water filters, you really do get what you pay for. The water filter that I use personally in my home is from PH Prescriptions. They have a whole range of filters that you can choose from. You can get the link below in the description. And they've got under sink water filters. They've got shower filters. They have whole house water filters. They have little water coolers that you can filter your water. They have everything you need to provide safe drinking water and they get all the heavy metals and chemicals that are fantastic. With that being said, if you've been drinking water from the tap, and especially if you've been doing it for a long time, you most likely do have heavy metal buildup in your tissues. The fastest and easiest way to determine if you have heavy metals in your body and determine your body burden of toxins is by doing what's called a hair mineral analysis or an HTMA. You can get a link below in the description to do one of those as well. This is the test that I've been doing for well over 10 years. I monitor my heavy metal levels and over the years, they've just been slowly been going down and going down as I've been detoxing my body. Doing an HTMA is one of the best ways to determine what heavy metals that you have in your body. All the heavy metals that I just listed above in this video, you can find out your body burden and your levels of these metals that you have in your body. And this test is great. It doesn't only reveal heavy metals, it also reveals mineral deficiencies, adrenal fatigue, thyroid function, your stress levels. A lot of really, really interesting information can be gleaned from an HTMA, including mineral toxicity. Some people have, you know, manganese toxicity that they get from their wells. I did an HTMA on Ben Greenfield and found he was manganese toxic from his well. Every client that I see that has manganese or very high manganese on their HTMA, I instantly know that that's coming from well water currently or a well that they drink from in their past. So the HDMA can really help pinpoint what's going on with your health, what heavy metals you have, and then I can give you a regimen on how to detox those toxicities. Before you begin working on your health and detoxing your body, you need to know what contaminants you have and you can find that out with an HTMA because you wanna test, not guess. When you're trying to get rid of heavy metals in your body, we need to know what metals you have to know how to remove them. You can click this link above to learn my story about how HTMA and doing a detoxification program based on that hair mineral analysis completely changed my life, turned my health around to the health that I enjoy today. I, and it all started with that HTMA. So there you have it. With heavy metals, the threat is very real. I have tested thousands of people. I have talked to thousands of clients about their water, their drinking water, the water that they're showering in. Because you know you have to think, even if you have a water filter where you're drinking most of your water filtered, you're still showering 
in heavy metals and other contaminants. Your health begins with clean water. So you've got to really, you know, get back to the basics. Sometimes when people have health issues or fatigue or their brain fog, they think it's some complex thing or it's genetic or something like that. But you, you have to start with the basics. You need to drink clean water. Finding out what contaminants are in your water, uh, finding out what heavy metals you have in your body, and then doing a process to detox those contaminants will go a long way to you achieving the health results and achieving your health goals. And that's what you're looking for. That's why you're watching this video. So that's all I've got on heavy metals and water. So if you guys like the content in this video, please click the subscribe button with notifications so you'll get a link every time that I publish a new video. And I, I really appreciate you tuning in because it's such a pleasure to be able to bring you this content and education because I truly want you to feel good. You deserve to be healthy and to feel good and to have joy in your life. And that's my goal is to help you accomplish that. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Wendy Myers. See you guys soon.